Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a sci-fi drama film called Welcome to Earth. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The premise of the movie is set in the year 2618, when the human species has gone extinct, and the Earth is not what it used to be. The climate conditions are so extreme that a powerful sandstorm covers every part of the Earth throughout the year. A spaceship lands on the surface amidst the sandstorm. Four extraterrestrial species step out of the ship and make their way through the powerful wind. They stop in front of an entrance to a building. The alien who is leading the group opens the door easily. It is almost as if they have been here before and are revisiting the Earth for a purpose. Following that, they get on an elevator that takes them somewhere under the ground. The building seems to be a bunker that was constructed to hold life after the conditions on the surface got too harsh for the humans to survive. When the elevator stops, they come across a hallway. The doors open by themselves, inviting them in. On walking inside, they hear a loud noise from behind them and are startled. This notifies the automated computer system that the aliens can in fact hear. It announces that the sense of hearing has been detected. Following that, a bright light flashes onto their faces, forcing them to turn away. The automated voice again claims that visual senses have been detected. It is still unclear to the aliens what they are dealing with. The voice then asks them if they encountered a satellite that showed them the way. If yes, one of them must be accustomed to earthly visual concepts. Following the announcement, three of the tall aliens take their masks off, revealing their blue complexion and eyes that only have pupils. The leader, on the other hand, still stays behind the mask. To test the magnitude of their knowledge of earthly concepts, the automated voice asks them to select one of the pictures displayed on the monitor in accordance with the given word. The leader steps forward to take on the task. The first word he is given is horse. Among four pictures of random animals, he chooses Sarah Jessica Parker, I mean, a horse. Next, he is asked to choose a tree among the pictures of a flower, a plant, and a mushroom. He chooses the tree correctly, proving that he is educated on Earth's concepts. At last, he is asked to select the picture of a satellite, which he does perfectly. After the brief test, the voice confirms the knowledge and understanding of speech in the species. Moments later, a video starts to play on the monitor. A scientist in the video explains that the place they are in is a museum on human history that had been established in 2117. It was an effort to preserve knowledge about humans when they had no hopes left for survival. It is meant to showcase the history of humanity and was built with the help of the Council of Human Preservation. Only the leader seems to be understanding the clip, while the others wait for the explanation. The scientist then claims that it is a human tradition to greet one another, and so he welcomes the aliens to Earth. He follows this by saying that, unfortunately, humans have gone extinct. The last alien is about to take off his mask, but the comment makes him freeze. The professor in the video explains that the museum contains 10 billion records and 10 million samples of human society. When the alien involuntarily asks how the humans went extinct, the video stops playing. The system recognizes the command and proceeds to explain how the extinction of humans began. It says that humans failed to understand the true origin of the world, but despite the fact, they made significant progress in technology. Clips of people landing on the moon, building satellites, and doing revolutionary things are shown. The aliens watch in awe, finally understanding what the Earth was like before the climate change. However, soon, the clips change from happy to destructive ones. Countries and states fight for territories. The aliens realize that humans took too much from nature, to the point that nature couldn't save them anymore. They were the cause of their own downfall. As a last resort to save the world, the officials decided to ask for help from extraterrestrial creatures with whom they share the universe. For this, they sent human ambassadors to different parts of space to look for aliens and ask for help. As the screen shows the pictures of said ambassadors, the leader touches the face of one of them named Rene Shepard. The computer detects the touch input and starts to explain the story of the ambassador. Rene had joined the fleet in 2087 and was one of the seven ambassadors who were sent to look for extraterrestrial creatures. He was selected fourth in a class of 400 people. A flashback shows Rene attending a training session the ambassadors had to take before they were sent for the mission. 
The comm officer, Whitney, explains to them about a black box called the Knowledge Probe that is made especially for the mission. The device contains everything that is necessary to teach an alien about earthly language and behavior. When the ambassadors finally meet an alien species, they are supposed to use it to teach them about the planet and convince them to aid humans. Whitney also explains that they have already sent 6,000 such devices to different parts of space. The last seven boxes will be accompanied by the ambassadors. Right before they are sent off for the mission, Representative Alice tells them that this might be the most important mission for humankind and expresses gratitude towards all the ambassadors who are willing to risk their lives for their people. At the end of the convention, they swear to find extraterrestrial help or die trying to do so. The ambassadors, including Rene, are allowed to meet their families for one last time. His father asks him to send a postcard from space, to which he jokingly says that he will make an alien bring it. His mother, on the other hand, is worried for her son's safety. She asks him to pilot the space pod safely. He kisses his wife and takes a picture with his family, hoping that he will meet them again. The ambassador who takes the picture is his best friend, Tess. The ambassadors then finally board the space pods that each of them is supposed to pilot. Rene puts his family's picture on the control panel and gets ready for the initiation of the mission. His wife tells his parents she has a feeling all of this is wrong, but it is too late for Rene to turn back. The pods finally take off and soon enter hyperdrive. Rene experiences some heavy turbulence because of the speed of the pod, but it soon stops when he reaches his first destination. He starts the scans for the first waypoint to check if the area is inhabited by any extraterrestrial beings. Back in the control room, each ambassador has their own comm officers who report to them on what they have to do next. When Rene's results come back negative, he is told to jump further into space to the second point. He drives through space at a very high speed again. One of Rene's colleagues is already at his fourth waypoint. When he doesn't find the evidence of living beings, he tries to jump to the other part of space but his pod explodes, killing him instantly. Now, only six ambassadors are left. Back in the control room, they try to check his vitals, but receive no signal. They realize that he is dead and cover his part of the control panel with a white cloth. Following that, Whitney announces to all the officers that they have lost one of their ambassadors, which creates tension among them. They have an emergency meeting to figure out who is the most sus. Yet, they remain professional and carry on with the mission. In the meantime, Ambassador Tess is in her 18th waypoint, going stronger than everyone else. However, one after another, the ambassadors begin to die because of pod malfunctions, oxygen failures, and getting way too close to a star. After a few days, Tess, Rene, and one other ambassador are the only ones left. Tess asks the comm officer how everyone is doing, to which she lies and says that they are fine. Tess jokingly says that she will beat Renee to the mission and continues the jump. However, she gets too close to the sun during the jump and dies. She really committed to that joke. Back on Earth, her control panel is also covered in a white cloth. It has been several days since the mission started and Renee is on waypoint 213. He asks the comm officer about Tess. To keep his spirit up, the officer lies and says that Tess is doing great. He also playfully comments that he will beat her to the aliens and continues the jump. After the comment, another ambassador dies, leaving Rene as the only surviving one. On his way to waypoint 214, Rene's pod starts to malfunction. Everyone on Earth who is hoping for his survival is on their feet. The comm officer tries to retrieve data from the pod but fails. Eventually, Rene loses all control of the pod and it crashes on a blue planet that looks awfully like the Earth. Since the pod lands on land with a thick layer of snow on top, Rene has no fatal injuries. However, the temperature of the planet is way lower than his body can handle. His face turns blue with frostbite as he looks at the picture of his family. In the end, even the last ambassador is lost, leaving humanity with no hopes for survival. The cause of death is recorded to be rapid freezing due to a hostile atmosphere. If coincidentally the planet has an intelligent species living on it, Rene's preserved body still has a 10% chance of revival. The representative Alice tells Whitney that they cannot announce the deaths to the public because then the people will go into a frenzy. Whitney, who is mourning the soldiers' deaths, harshly claims that the men who died for humanity deserve respect. However, Alice stays put in her decision. Although the public was kept in the dark, they informed the families of the ambassadors of their deaths. 
a private funeral is held in honor of them. His death marked the end of the alien outreach program. No alien help was found, as they had predicted. Back in the bunker, the last alien takes off his mask and reveals that he is actually Rene, the only ambassador who completed the mission successfully and brought alien aid to the Earth. But he is too late. We can predict that he was revived by the blue-skinned aliens who are inhabitants of the snowy planet. The computer announces that Rene's files contain more than 10,000 messages, 800 pictures, and some video entries left by his loved ones. He asks the computer to show all of them. The movie ends as he watches a video of him hugging his family before his departure. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.